So first of all, Joe, for people that don't know, tell us a little bit about yourself. My name is Joe Hurd. I'm a chef and a presenter. I present on the on BBC Saturday Kitchen. I have shows on the Travel Channel, Discovery Channel. I used to be the presenter on the kids' cooking show, The Munchbox, on ITV many moons ago. Um, I do a lot of kind of live shows, so you'll often see me at BBC Good Food Show, uh, Jimmy's Farm Festival. I do a lot of the car fest stuff with Chris Evans. Um, I do a radio show occasionally on BBC Leicester now and again. And yeah, I'm, I also work with a lot of big um, Italian food companies. I'm, I'm, I'm Anglo-Italian. This, this one is slightly less Anglo-Italian, but she's, she's getting her kind of darker skin and features coming through. Uh, so I do a lot of food with the Italian, uh, a lot of work with the Italian food sector. So working with Del Italia, um, I work with um, Mena Brea Bia, uh, which obviously we need. Now I'm a new father, it's quite a useful collaboration. And I work with companies like Galbani, Serge Ital, to kind of promote Italian food in the UK. And on top of that, I'm a chef, I'm a cook, um, and I do a lot of kind of recipe writing and development. But I would say as well, a new daddy. A uh, very yeah, the, job. the hardest job I've ever had in my life. And a hundred percent true. And I started working off, I started working when I was um, 17 at Bird's Eye in Hull, um, where I'm originally from. And I was working in the deep freezers, working 12 hour shifts, uh, cleaning deep freezers, defrosting them by hand. That was a cinch compared to this. Well, I think she's very gorgeous. How old is she now? She is, you will be 14 weeks on Thursday. And can you describe to us in three words, Joe, how you're feeling right now? Um, fortunate, um, resilient and tired. I can imagine. And tell us a little bit how the lovely little Liberty there has changed your life. Um, Liberty has completely overhauled every single element of my life. Um, I, I, was, I would describe myself as a kind of single, I lived a bachelor life for a good 30 years solid. I was very much a bachelor. I thought I'd probably be a bachelor all my life. I was very much into the single way, a single man way of living. I was living in London, um, had a nice, nice kind of apartment, um, very active social life, working in the industry. And then and I reconnected with um, my partner and it was kind of like love at first sight for the second time. And Liberty came along, I'd say quite quickly within the context of that relationship. And I went from being very free and easy and carefree to literally, I don't have a, t I don't have a minute to myself. Uh, I, I'm completing work for clients and I'm, and I'm do and, and that's basically, it's any work I have at the moment, even during this lockdown, um, spending time with Mary, helping time, helping around the house, which is constant when there's an extra, <laughs> You saw that smile. But it's it's he's laughing. The baby. There's so much more. A good laugh. It, it it's like um and then and then any any time I have off, it's really just trying to do whatever I can to help around. Um and and it's it's uh, a oh, you know it, it's just continuous. It's it's relentless. It's never ending. It's um your life goes from being your. I never realised how much free time I had. I. And that's what I keep telling my friends who are having babies. You don't realise, come on, you don't realise how much free time you have um, now. Every minute it counts. Um, but in the, in another respect, it's it's kind of life affirming. And oh, it's all right. See what I mean? <laughs> um, it says let's move positions. Should we move positions? Oh, go on then, my mate. Back to my mate. There you go, you get a little rest later, now. Invariably. Um, no, it's, um, it's, it's, it's a moment to kind of, um, I think, reflect on what was before, and before was a very carefree life, and now it's very intense, it's very enjoyable, the highs are very high, um, the lows aren't that low, you just feel tired quite a bit. I do miss sleep, that's a big changer. I used to have a good, I used to be one of those people who was like in bed, at nine and would wake up at five and go to the gym and have a run and now it's more like i'll go to bed at 10 
and where you can put 12 and one and two and three and four. And then finally just decide to get out of bed at five, but I have no energy to go to the gym. I mean, they're locked anyway um, and, and not have any energy to run and try and muddle through what's work. But yeah. um, it's, but it's also like there's purpose now to life. I, I'm not sure how much purpose I actually had. Oh. Sorry, I'm not sure how much purpose I did actually have before, aside from, you know, providing enough money so we could go on holiday or pay the rent or buy stuff we didn't need. Now, you know, I've got to watch every penny, every pound. I've got to think that we have to provide for her and we have to make sure that all the foundations for her future are laid now. And that is an incredible feeling. It's you, you get up and I mean, when I'm, I'm at the moment, I, I run, um, I have a show on Instagram called Scram School. And it's like a cooking show for kids. And, you know, there's a lot of work to do. We do every single day. We do a live show. And I find myself sometimes thinking, oh, I'll just go on my phone for like five minutes. I've got, I love American football. I was like, I play an American football game. And I'm like, you can't. There's a, there's a mouth to feed. There's a baby up there who relies on you. And so, yeah, and, and, and really I've been drawing a lot on, I mean, it's been a very difficult time for me as a freelancer. We haven't had any income coming in. And uh, Mary's on statutory maternity pay so really it's it's you know it's it's one of those moments when you plan for a baby and you're like yeah everything's fine we've got money coming in um we, we can afford to do this then on that that disappeared overnight so yeah i've really had to step up yeah. i think i'm really having to become a man uh, yeah, you, you, yeah my... you feel like the hunter gatherer 100 percent. yeah hunter gatherer firefighter like constantly putting out little fires, plugging things. I mean, I'm no DIY person. I'm not good at stuff like that. But, you know, the washing machine, washing line felt like ripped out in the winds we had before. So I had to do, sort all that out. I, I found new skills, which I, I never knew I had. I mean, I'm not particularly skilled in them. I do make a bit of a hash job, but you now it's working. I'm getting by. You're doing a great job, Joe, by the sounds of things. Now, we'd love to know your funniest story so far of having your little girl, Liberty. Funny parenting story. I think the funniest thing, I, I still think this, is the irony that we called her Liberty four weeks before lockdown. I mean, she's never experienced Liberty in her life so far. But um, she's done the classics. Um, you know, I, I, I think it was, a, it was about four weeks ago, um, we, we'd have her into bed in the morning to feed her. And I always do the first feed, like it's usually between 4.30 and 5.30. And I remember one, my, my partner was sleeping next to me and she looked really peaceful. And she likes to kind of wake up to the sound of Liberty kind of laughing and gurgling. I think it's a nice way. And I just, Liberty finished the bottle and I just moved her towards Mary. And Mary's yes. eyes slowly opened and Liberty just sneezed about three times in her face. Just, oh. <laughs> which was very funny. But also we had, we had our first family Zoom meeting a while ago, uh, last Thursday. We had my cousins who live in Northern Ireland. We had my mum and my dad, my aunts and uncles. We were, it was the first time we'd not done it. We'd not really had time and we'd not really had, I think, the morale to kind of do it. And we did it. And within one minute, I just felt my lap really warm. And she's not like, she's not a pooey baby, but I just picked her up. And it was, it was that she just had her injections. And so I think it had kind of come, like, <laughs> it affected her body. And I was just covered absolutely Tsunami. cake. Absolutely cake. And it's like a luminous green at this stage. So... It's not even the kind of thing where you can laugh about. It's like, this is repulsive. So we were very, sh we were only on that call for about three minutes. And then it was kind of like, cheap. and and actually, uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but I, I will. Um, while we were changing it, it just continued. So we had 10 minutes, I think three nappies and, and three bags and two muslins in the bin. Yeah, yeah. Incredible. I think every parent has been there with that, for sure. At least you were at home though, could have been worse. Well, th when she was born, um, and Mary was uh, kind of like, after the birth, I was left holding the baby. I've never been, I'm an only child. I've never, and I've never, all my cousin's kids have all been born overseas, or I've not been around. So I've never had an experience of a newborn ever. And we didn't do any prenatal classes. You know, we live in quite a tight knit community. Um, Mary's family are all here. So we kind of had quite a big support network, or we did. Um, and we didn't do any classes or anything because it was like, you know, that attitude like, yeah, we don't need to, you know, we know, we know these things. And I was left with a newborn baby and Mary was uh, taken away for just a kind of checkovers and stuff. 
I hadn't got a clue what I was doing. And, you know, they do that first poo. And it was like unholy. And, and the wonderful kind of NHS midwives are very like, just get on with it, you know, to change enough. It was like, I have no clue. I, I was covered. She was covered. The bed sheets were covered. So, yeah, I think, I think the... That was a big learning curve. <laughs> oh, uh, when you've been up for 48 hours and it was 3 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Nothing prepares you. We'd um, now like to know three bits of advice you would give to anyone becoming a parent. Um, do the prenatal classes. <laughs> Inform yourself. Um, I, I was very much of the opinion it's not going to change my life significantly. My life is, was, is very hectic. It's, it, every day is different. Um, this is more, more, more hectic. I mean, you get different children. I mean, Libby's had a few problems with her tummy, so she's been up and she's been quite colicky. Uh, but inform yourself about things like that. I didn't know what colic was. I didn't know what, um, I didn't know how to change nappies. Um, so I would definitely just inform yourself. I've had to yeah. learn on the bounce and luckily Mary's a brilliant mum and she's, she's kind of, kind of helped me and kind of shown yeah. me along the way. Um, I would say, Definitely. I mean, and again, Mary did all of this. Uh, get everything prepared, like, you know, have, have everything ready for when the baby comes. Like, don't leave anything to the last minute. Don't leave anything to chance. We were having, she was due in January. So we had that kind of run up to Christmas. And then obviously Christmas is quite distracting and you don't want to be going into mamas and papas and doing all your shopping over Christmas. So I think we were ready to go by October. And I think it gave me a lot of even things like we'd, st we'd stocked up on the nappies, we'd stocked up on formula. We knew we had everything in so that for the mm -hmm. first few weeks, for the first few months, we didn't really have to go out and do any That's extra great. Things. Yeah, good advice, Joe. So I remember Chris Akabusi saying, oh, I can remember Chris Akabusi saying, uh, prior preparation prevents poor performance, the five Ps. So I'd say apply the five Ps, get everything pre-prepared. And, and um, I'd also say, um, make sure you make time for yourself and your partner like um i think just when the baby comes along offer even if you feel really tired if you feel like you've got lots of work on you know your partner's going through the same thing um i'd say to new dads just step in do an hour or two the pram is your best friend get get them loaded into the pram wrapped up put down up open and under the tree she loves just she'll look she could be going crazy she go under the tree she looks at the trees trance so yeah, but, true. the pram is and this is i think this is one for the dads just know know when to pick up the baton and um and and put yourself third effectively yeah, yeah and get, good advice. Get, get the pram rolling yeah definitely pram will be your best friends now if you joe could go back in 10 years time, yeah, go back in time, 10 years, what bit of advice would you give yourself? Take every opportunity which comes along, whatever it is, just say yes to. Um, yeah. Even if you don't know what you're doing, say yes, you'll work it out along the way. I did that um, and it kind of landed me with my dream job, and my dream career. So never ever, never dismiss an opportunity. Um, take everything as it comes. Um, don't take life too seriously. Never take life too seriously. And I would definitely say 10 years ago, I probably did want a baby 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I've got so much respect for anybody. It, it, I'm 33 now and I feel like I was just ready. I was just at a point in my life. Anybody who can do this, even 31, 30, down to 17, to teenage parents, you have my ultimate respect because this is one hard job. And I was told... Sure. 23 year old Joe, that you were in no way ready for a child. Oh. And also, I know that the memories are coming every single day, she's changing every day, but so far, what memory is going to stay with you forever, becoming a dad? Um, the moment I held her for the first time, I know it's the cliche moment, but um, I, was, I was terrified. Um, I, I'm not a squeamish person at all like as a chef i'm used to carcasses blood gore visceral tissue um and I'm, I'm not a squeamish person at the moment i nearly passed out during the birth which i didn't expect and the moment they put her in my hand 
uh, she, her eyes were wide, like wide open. She reminded me, you know, the action man with the eagle eyes. When they used to yes. like this. When they used to do that at the back of their heads. She just was looking like that. And she had really dark black and she still, her eyes are still quite black gray. And she just looked at me and I was, I was overcome by love, but also fear. It was incredible. I've never ever experienced that. But I suppose little things, I think, um, the times we kind of like, you know, we, we've been going for, we, we live, the countryside is all around us and we live in a beautiful part of the UK, just kind of south of Derby and north of Leicester, a uh, really beautiful countryside. So I'd say that I'll never, I'll probably always remember lockdown. There's a lot of negatives, but for one little kind of beacon of light, there's been just going for a walk with her and just chatting to her, giggling. We do, I love reading, so we read to her every night. Um, and we read a lot, and she loves books. And I didn't think kids could engage with literature so early. And they really love, can. Yeah, it's mental. I mean, like I, I probably know the words to Shazam and the Blue Ball and Pipo off by heart now. But um, yeah, it, I think just these really. We've not been able to do anything massive. Like we we planned maybe to take her back to Italy this year. Um, that's not going to happen. I don't even think we'll afford a, a summer holiday in the UK. I don't think we'll get a chance. So I think what's really nice is it's all just been the really simple little things we might have overlooked and taken for granted mm. and, and seeing her grow. And, you know, the, the moment, the moment when she sees her cousins again <laughs> for the first time. That'd be really special. Yeah. That'd be really think, special. I think we're lucky. We're taking lots of really special moments and really simple things at the moment. Yeah, that's nice. And I think you've had time to just stop and breathe it all in, which you'll look back on. And I'm sure you'll be actually really glad you did life has slowed down and you've been able to enjoy her and enjoy all those moments which exactly. is brilliant we've yeah. got a question we'd like to know something what would we not know about you is there anything really unusual that you've chatted about your career you've chatted about being a dad is there anything <laughs> this is the baby shows live at home questions they want to know something a bit unusual about you um i i'm there's if you if you follow me or have read about me before, I, I, there's not a lot of holes to fire, but um, I suppose one thing which always shocks people is I used to weigh 17 stone. I used to be massive. I was a big That is wow. unbelievable. Yeah, I was huge. I, um, I grew up kind of, I don't know, I'd be eating maybe two or three bowls of pasta a night. Um, I did a lot of, as a kid, I did a lot of exercise. I was playing football. I was playing cricket, like the whole... Uh, I was Sunday league, I was, I was in the gym, I was running, and then I went to university and I just stopped overnight, everything, and all that muscle turned to fat, and I realised I had a very poor metabolism, which was only maintained previously by the amount of exercise I did, and yeah, for about five years, I was, I looked like if a piece of gammon had swallowed a breeze block, that's how I would describe myself. Wow. Uh, but aside from cooking, my other kind of big passion, my really dorky passion, and this is something which I don't think loads of people know. Um, I'm obsessed. I did my degree was in um, Scottish military history, and I'm obsessed with Bonnie Prince Charlie and the Jacobite Rebellion. So if I'm not cooking, I think I'm probably boring. <laughs> what if you've got time? <laughs> I'm probably boring yeah, the life. Yeah, that's brilliant. Out. I'm boring the life out. With Mary with like tales of the Jacobites, and A we're lucky. Day we liberty. Did... Yeah. <laughs> Well, I sing for Liberty. I sing Charlie is my darling and I sing um, Come Over the Sea, Charlie. I'm not Scottish. Like I said, I'm Italian Yorkshire. I've got no, no real kind of allegiance to Scotland, but um, we, we're singing all these Gaelic airs to her. She loves I love them. It. So hopefully it's going into a little ear and just... It will be. Everything. Yeah, she'll be there. She'll be loving it. Now, it's been so lovely talking to you, Joe. But finally, where can we find you? What are you up to now? I know you touched on it briefly and you're doing some really cool things uh, at this time. So where can everybody find you? I am currently, well, if you go into Instagram, that's your best bet as I've kind of abandoned Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's at Joe Heard Cook on Instagram. Um, and my cooking school, which is for kids. It's just Italian food for parents and kids. While we're on lockdown and we've got a bit more time to spend to, to, uh, with each other, we just thought we'd do some cooking classes, just showing how to do basic Italian. And that is at Strand School. So that is every week. We start on Monday with ingredients. We do Tuesday equipment, Wednesday to cook. Thursday, we talk about the history of the dish and Friday, we do live Q&A. Um, aside from that, I'm down to be on stage at the Country Living Festival in Christ uh, Christmas. 
hopefully if we get the lockdown lifted, then maybe that will happen. That's my next job in the diary. It's Christmas. So, um, but yeah. um, aside from that, yeah, if you just go onto my Instagram page, I keep you updated. I'm doing a lot of work with Dell Italia. We're doing a home delivery system, uh, a home delivery uh, service. So delivering um, quality Italian produce, family boxes, baby boxes. Pizza oh, amazing. Boxes, stuff like that. So that's good to know. That's yeah, really good but, to know. And I think it's nice to have a bit of inspiration. We're all at home having to cook. I know personally, I'm fed up of my own cooking. So I think it's fabulous we can get some inspiration from you. And I love Italian food as well. So I'll definitely be uh, checking that one out for sure. But Joe, enjoy your little girl. And uh, thank you so much for joining us at the Baby Show Live at Home. And we'll you. be sure to see you on Instagram and hopefully out and about again very, very soon. I hope to be Thank at the you, Baby Joe. Show live next year. Oh, we'll absolutely. We'll get you there. We'll get you up yeah. on the stage, Joe. That'll be wonderful. Thank you. Thanks so much. You take okay. care. Take Love care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.